All right, so welcome back. Uh, we were talking about the issue of confidentiality. <clears throat> and essentially, we saw that in the case of Tatiana uh, Tarasov, that the majority argued that uh, confidentiality should be uh, should should have been violated in order to try to protect this young woman's life. But Justice Clark made the counter-argument that they did the right thing, both legally and morally, because of how important confidentiality is to the profession. Our instinct seems to be to side with the majority. Uh, our instinct seems to be, yeah, we should look after this young woman's life who cares about confidentiality. But actually, if we stop and think about it from the moral standpoint, we realize that uh, the, the, my, uh, the descending view of Clark is actually the right one. And in fact, all of our ethicists would come to agree with that. If you were to look at this through the standpoint of Jeremy Bentham and try to find the greatest good for the greatest number, the fact is that the greatest good for the greatest number would be served by maintaining confidentiality. Think about it this way. There are a lot of people who are going to need uh, psychiatric care. People who, like Clark said, are not going to be willing to come forward and seek that help if they're not going to uh, know that that confidentiality is going to be maintained. Well, if they don't come forward and seek help, then they're not going to be helped. It's as simple as that. And the fact is that you might say, well, what if we capture somebody and we force them into it like the court does sometimes? Most of the time, that's not going to work because those people don't want to be there. They don't believe that they should be there. They are going to try to fight the system at every turn. They will try to figure out a way out of it instead of maintaining it. So, put very simply, um, these individuals need that confidentiality before they'll ever even decide to come forward to seek help. And if they don't come forward, they're not going to get it, which means the problem, whatever it is, is going to continue. Even if they do come forward, they won't reveal all the necessary information for the doctor to be able to effectively treat them. They'll withhold things if confidentiality isn't there. And so we need to maintain that rule of confidentiality absolutely in order to help the greatest majority of the people. You know, think about it. Um, if I, as a psychiatrist, were one of those people working with Podar, and I said, oh, I don't care about his confidentiality, I'm going to violate it, uh, and I'm going to tell, you know, to try to help this person, there's a possibility I could have helped her, maybe I could have saved her life, uh, but maybe not. We don't know. But the one thing I do know is that as soon as it got out that I'm not maintaining confidentiality, nobody is going to come seeking help from me anymore. Which means that all the thousands of people I could potentially have helped during my career are no longer going to be benefited. So, you know, that being the case, it seems that Bentham would recognize the value, the importance of confidentiality as providing the greatest good to the greatest number. Uh, Kant would say essentially the same thing. You know, with Kant, you have to deal in terms of absolutes. You can't say, well, I'm going to do this in this instance and that in another. It's either I'm going to have confidentiality at all times, or I'm going to throw confidentiality out the window, one or the other. Um, and as we've seen, confidentiality is far too important to the medical profession uh, in order to simply get rid of it. Kant would also tell us to work through the categorical imperative. What would happen if every single person on the planet were to throw confidentiality out the window, to no longer use it, to no longer care about it? Well, again, just like Clark predicted, all those people who uh, need help are not going to come get it. The few people who do are going to be guarded and withhold information. There's not going to be a sense of trust between the doctor and the patient, which means that nothing is going to get accomplished. And so... Uh, it violates the, con the uh, categorical imperative. The imperative of respect, right? We want to treat all individuals as an end, not as a means only. Would I simply be, if I violated confidentiality, I would simply be using this man as a means to an end 
I would not be treating him with respect and dignity in the way that I would wish to be treated. And so Kant, too, would see that maintaining confidentiality is absolute. Rand would also recognize confidentiality as an absolute. As a uh, psychiatrist or psychologist, I've gone through a lot of time, energy, training to get to this position. I want to enjoy the results of my action. I don't want to put my career at risk by violating confidentiality and having my clientele dry up. I want to be able to help as many people as I can so that more and more people hear about me and come to me for services. So that means that I need to maintain confidentiality absolutely. Our friend Habermas, he would uh, of course bring together all these different individuals and try to talk about it to discuss it uh, but in the end I think the decision that Habermas would come to the rational consensus would be the same as the others that we need to maintain confidentiality it's too important to the medical profession to get rid of and of course Aristotle's always a little bit tricky uh, you can kinda go either direction sometimes but Aristotle most likely would also side with the rest of the group uh, and recognize that maintaining confidentiality is very important because the treatment of the mentally ill is important. And those people um, who most could be benefited are the ones who are coming forward to seek help. If you're not willing to come forward and seek help, then nobody can help you. That's all there is to it. If somebody forces you into it, you're not going to take it seriously. You're not going to get the benefit from it. Only if you choose to come forward, because that says, I recognize I have a problem. I want to do something about it. But nobody is going to do that if they believe that they're going to get in trouble because of doing so. And that's why confidentiality is crucial. Clark recognizes that fact. Our five ethicists would recognize that fact. But the majority decision seems to toss it aside. And you know, since this 1976 decision, more and more holes have been poked into confidentiality. And the result has been exactly what Clark predicted. The psychiatric profession is not as effective it is not benefiting as many people as it could have because people who are most at risk, the people who most need the help, are not willing to come forward to get it. And if they don't come forward of their own accord, in most cases, they're never going to be found out. And that information is simply going to be buried until something happens, such as Tatiana being killed or you know, who knows what else. If these uh, psychiatrists had not tried to um, uh, force Podar, had they not talked about, gee, should we tell somebody about this, he probably would have stuck with it. He might have been willing to put forth the effort. We don't know. But maybe through additional sessions, through more time, his problem could have been taken care of, just as so many could. Not every problem is going to be ta able to be taken care of. You know, the psychiatrist is not a miracle worker. It's not a perfect science. But the fact is, to provide, in Bentham's words, the greatest good for the greatest number, we need to maintain an absolute sense of confidentiality um, and stop poking holes in it. So hopefully, having gone through our five uh, ethicists on this one, you'll be able to uh, carefully see why yeah, I feel anyway that Clark is essentially right uh, in regards to this and why he seems to hold the moral high ground on this as well. And hopefully for those of you who should go on to look at our next uh, case discussion on uh, uh, case eight, that it will be very beneficial to you guys as well uh, in putting together that uh, discussion. All right, so I think that'll do it for today. 
Have a great day. Uh, like always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me, and I'll be happy to get back to you about that. All right? Take care.